Today I'm going to talk about a few tips to make your medical school applications a little better so you can increase the chance that you can get into the medical school that you always dreamed about. So I'm going to be focusing more on the AMCAS, which is the American Medical College Application Service, I believe. It's more geared towards the MD and allopathic medical schools in the United States. However, if you're trying to get into the DO or osteopathic medical schools, you'd be using the AA comas, which, is, uh, which has a lot of similarities, all of minor differences. But you'll find that a lot of these tips will be relevant. So the first tip I have is really to start early. There's no reason not to start early since all the information is online already. I'll include a link down below to everything that I talk about today, especially the official AMCA's informational guide. It's about 80 pages long, so I'll try to summarize it for you guys. So I highly recommend you guys start working on your application early so you can start working on it right when it opens up on May 1st, and you can submit it right when submission opens on June 1st. You want to submit your application early so there's less people from medical schools to compare you to when they're looking at your application and also so there are more open spots available since later on in the application cycle people will start getting accepted. And like I mentioned there's no excuse to not submit your application early since all the information is online and I'll be going through some of the sections with you today. So the first big section is the background section, basically your basic background information, your demographic information, colleges that you went to your criminal record, hope, which hopefully you don't have, and things like that. Pretty self-explanatory. It's just kind of, you just have to go through it and get it done and get it over with. The next big section would be your transcript section, and you want to get your transcript submitted to the AMCAS as soon as possible so your application can get verified and sent out to medical schools. When you're inputting your data, you also want to make sure you enter in all your classes and your grades correctly, because if you enter in a lot of mistakes, AMCAS will send your application back to you. You have to fill it out again and submit it and it's going to take longer for your application to get verified and sent out to medical schools. So really make sure you get your grades in and your classes written down correctly, your first pass. When you're entering in your classes and your grades, you also have to designate wh whether the class is BBCM or not. This is biology, chemistry, physics, and math. And the reason for this is because medical schools obviously want to see not just how well you do in your classes in general, but especially with math and science classes since that's going to be the focus of medical school. The designation for different classes, I'll include a page down below that kind of summarizes the different, different designations of different classes. If you have any questions or concerns and you're not sure about how you can classify a class, you can always look it up on a student doctor network or Reddit and usually people have asked similar questions about what classes you've had and how you can classify them. If there's still discrepancies, you can look up the, your class description on your school's website and if there's still, if you're still unsure about what to designate a class as, you can ask your pre-health the next big section is the work activities section. Here you're going to list up to 15 different activities, work experiences, shadowing, publications, scholarships, jobs, volunteering, things like that. If you have a lot of activities, you want to pick the most meaningful ones, the most meaningful 15. You're going to have 700 characters to write about these activities and experiences, and for three of them, you'll be able to designate as the most meaningful, and you get 1,300 and I think 25 characters to write about. And for these, I'd recommend you pick different activities for the most meaningful ones especially since you want to paint more of a comprehensive picture of how you are as a person and your motivations for medicine. So for, for this section, I'd recommend to start a Google Doc or some kind of document where you list whatever activities or experiences that you're going through. You list your, uh, your advisors for that particular activity, their contact information, your start and end dates, and then a, a list of bullet points about the role that you had, the task that you did, different experiences or anecdotes of things that resonated with you, and how the experience shaped you as a person and your professional desires for pursuing medicine. So for the most meaningful activities section, I recommend you follow a basic structure of intro body conclusion, where you have a brief mention about the role that you had, the task that you did, maybe like a sentence or so, a body where you have an anecdote about a particular experience, and a conclusion where you have a brief sentence that you tell instead of show, since you're showing the anecdote, you, you tell briefly and explain how that particular experience your desire to practice medicine. You might talk about your how you develop personally, how you develop passion for the particular brand of medicine you want to practice, how the experience is to you. So for example, for me, one of my experiences was dermatology specialty clinic that I set up at an underserved clinic. I, t I mentioned an anecdote of a patient that I took care of who was really concerned about different skin conditions that she had. So she was really embarrassed and she, uh, she was really concerned about different uh, some certain uh, skin conditions that she had and she hadn't been seen for that skin condition. So I mentioned that anecdote and I talked about how she was really happy after she was seen and she figured out what was wrong with her and she was treated and she felt really cared for and how that whole experience really motivated me and consolidated even more my desire to pursue medicine and help others like her feel cared for and be 
treated and how all of that was worth it even with all the challenges that I faced with like doctors dropping out who were supposed to present for us and other things like that. Also about other experiences for things like tutoring instead of told how, how working with different students made me appreciate the value of mentorship. So basically create small stories where you briefly introduce yourself and the role that you played, have a small anecdote of a particular incident that really resonated with you, and a conclusion that summarizes how that event or that experience impacted you. If you're running out of room, you can also consolidate a few of your experiences. For example, if you have multiple publications, you can push that all into one. I recommend for spacing, if you're trying to do spacing, to just do double enters, so just have one space in between paragraphs if you really want to have paragraphs. And this is also true for the personal statement, which I'll be getting to right now. So for your personal statement, I'd recommend you start really early. You have 5,300 characters to write about why medicine, and why medicine is really the crux of the whole personal statement. So really brainstorm and spend a lot of time thinking about all the events that kind of led to the development of you as a person that wants to practice medicine. I would highly recommend you make a timeline. Maybe look back on that Google Doc that I recommend you start for your work activity section. And with that timeline, look back throughout your whole life and pull out the most important moments that shaped your desire to pursue medicine. And if it's a particular brand of medicine, even better, figure out what shaped your desire to practice that particular brand of medicine. So you want to create an outline and a central theme. You want to figure out the structure of your personal statement as well. For me, what I did was a chronological progression. I find that to be the easiest. Picking out the most impactful moments life that shaped your desire to pursue medicine and weaving that into a story about yourself. So what I did was have a hook, which I recommend as well, to try to stand out. I had an anecdote of a patient that really resonated with me and then I, ha I had a progression of my development of wanting to pursue medicine and then wanting to pursue family medicine in particular. You can also do things like a flashback, but I find a chronological progression to be generally the best setup for most people. The most important thing for the personal statement is really to tell a story. Make sure you're, you're weaving a very eloquent short story where you pick out the most important events in your life that shape your desire to pursue medicine and present that unique story in a compelling, concise, and cohesive way to medical schools. So you want to be honest, but present yourself in a good light, and you also want to stand out. Everyone's unique, so make sure you tell your unique story and don't have the repetitive, boring, predictable story that a lot of medical students have. Make sure you show and not tell through anecdotes and special stories that you've experienced, how your story is special and how medicine really does resonate with you and really how medicine really is a true passion for you and not just something that you're trying to do for other people or for more shallower goals. Since really medicine really isn't worth it if you're trying to do it for other people and medical schools want to see that you're really passionate about medicine and you're really going to be a positive force in healthcare. So for example, you could be, you could talk about how you were an athlete throughout high school, maybe even some of college or recreation as a, in college. You had an ACL tear or different other injuries and then you're constantly with the physical therapist and the orthopedic surgeon. This kind of spiked your interest so you decided to pursue exercise physiology in college. You started going to like surgery club, you were shadowing the hospital and you decided you want to be an orthopedic surgeon as a career. So you just tell the story of how you grew to want to become an orthopedic surgeon or maybe you came from an underserved community when you were younger. Your mother died of cancer because she wasn't screened early enough and she didn't have enough resources to take care of herself. And so this increased your desire to want to learn about cancer. So you got into college for molecular and cellular biology. You decided to, or immunology even, you decided to join the immunology or MCB club and you were volunteering at underserved clinics. And then maybe you decided that your calling was to become a hematologist in an underserved area since you could help prevent other underserved people like your mother from having to deal with similar circumstances that she did. So whatever your story is, tell your story. Ideally, mention how you want to practice a certain brand or type of medicine and really show not tell what led up to your personal and professional development that makes you a good fit for medicine and also makes medicine something that's a good fit for you and something that you want to be a part of your legacy and your profession and your life story. Really try to show how medicine is a calling for you. Again, besides this, some basic tips would be to make sure you use professional language. You don't use a lot of colloquial language. You don't waste a lot of words since the space is limited. You want to make sure you proofread this multiple times. I'd recommend you sound loud to yourself multiple times and also have editors maybe at your school. Most colleges have essay proofreaders and they could give you some good editing and general essay advice. Also ask different friends that you have and different people that you know are maybe good writers. And definitely try to get a breadth of proofreading experience from different friends and family and different 
good writers. So finally, after you're done with all these major sections, you're done with your work activity section, your personal statement, and the other like background information. The last section is selecting medical schools that you want to apply to. So for this, I'd recommend you use the MSTAR, which is the Medical School Admission Requirements Portal. I think it's about $28 for the service for a year. But you can find discount codes online. I think they're pretty simple too, so they shouldn't be too hard to figure out. And for these, what you want to do is you want to filter schools by your MCAT and GPA range. So you want to check what schools you might be interested in based on things like if you qualify for the GPA and MCAT ranges, but also their location. If you want to be close to like beach, or if you want to be close to your family and friends, if you want to live in a suburb or urban area. You also want to see if schools have like combined MD and MBA programs or other combined programs they might be interested in, maybe like a primary care path. You also want to check tuition. Some schools might charge like 30000 a year in tuition. Some schools might charge like 60000 You want to make sure their tuition structure fits within your financial plans and how much loans that you want to take out. Besides that, you want to look for schools' prerequisite requirements in some schools specific classes that aren't part of your general pre-med curriculum and you don't want to apply to schools if you don't meet all their requirements. So I've heard most students usually apply to between 15 to 20 schools. I applied around 30 schools. I'd recommend you do want to apply to a lot of schools but not every single school. Since you're probably not competitive or want to go to every single school, applying to more schools does cost more money. You have to consider that you have to pay money to apply for schools initially for your primary application. We also have to pay money to apply to schools for your secondary application. And some schools send out secondary applications without screening for applicants so you're going to have to spend, end up spending more money. Also, if you're applying to osteopathic schools, you're going to have to spend money on the AA Comas applications as well. So factor all these into the amount of schools that you want to select. I recommend choosing the bulk of your schools, being schools that you're competitive for and that you want to go to. Have a few schools that are kind of your fallback in case you don't get into the schools that you want to for some reason. And have a few reach schools that are kind of maybe your dream schools that you maybe you're not as competitive for, but you never know there's a chance that you could get in. So I hope some of this information was helpful. Let me know down below in the comments if you have any questions, comments, suggestions. And either myself or some other viewers, I know a few of my friends who are med students or even doctors are subscribed, so they can help you guys out down below as well. Make sure you uh, give this video a like. This is my third take on a third different day since, since I keep having technical difficulties. So please give this video a like. Subscribe down below if you haven't. Share this video with your uh, other pre-med friends that may find this helpful. And good luck with your medical school applications. Hope you guys have a great day. Take care.